Without electricity, it would be nearly impossible to operate a process facility. Electricity is used to run motors that drive equipment, such as pumps, mixers, and air compressors. Electricity is also used for lighting systems, instrumentation and control systems, and heating and air conditioning systems. Traditionally, electricity has been defined as the result of a movement of electrons from one place to another. The electrons come from atoms. Atoms consist of three basic particles, protons, electrons, and neutrons. Protons have a positive electrical charge. Electrons have a negative charge and neutrons don't have a charge. When an atom has the same number of electrons as protons, the positive and negative charges are balanced, and the atom is said to be electrically neutral. There are many forces in nature that can upset the balance of electrically neutral atoms. Any occurrence that causes an electrical charge imbalance, or in other words, anything that causes the number of electrons to be different from the number of protons, creates an electrical potential. An electrical potential is a situation that can lead to an electrical discharge. When an electrical discharge occurs, electrons or electrical charges move from one place to another. One example of an electrical potential is static electricity. Static electricity occurs when a large number of electrons builds up on a surface. A common cause of this type of buildup is friction. The buildup of electrons on a surface results in a high electrical charge and, consequently, a high electrical potential. When the potential is great enough, the electrons move or flow from one place to another. This flow of electrons is referred to as an electrostatic discharge. One of the most dramatic examples of an electrostatic discharge is lightning. Lightning occurs when atmospheric conditions cause a huge electrical potential to be built up between clouds and the Earth. When the charge imbalance is great enough, a tremendous arc forms that we call lightning. Electrostatic discharges are situations in which there's a momentary flow of current. Current can be defined as the movement of electrons or electrical charges from one place to another. For the vast majority of electrical equipment, a continuous flow of current is necessary for the equipment to operate. Now, with either an electrostatic discharge or a continuous current flow, there's movement of electrons. In order for this movement to occur, certain forces must be present. The forces related to the movement of electrons can be referred to as electromotive forces, or EMF. EMF is one way of expressing electrical potential. Another term that is used interchangeably with electrical potential is voltage. There are many sources of electrical potential. In this part, we'll focus on three, chemical action, heat, and light. Chemical action is the source of electrical potential that's at work in batteries. Whether the battery is a throwaway type or a rechargeable type, the basic elements are a set of electrodes and an electrolyte. The electrodes are generally some type of metallic material that becomes charged as a result of a chemical reaction. The electrolyte is the chemical that causes the necessary chemical reaction. Before the chemical reaction begins, both electrodes are electrically neutral. That is, they have an equal number of protons and electrons. The chemical reaction that takes place in a battery causes electrons to leave one of the electrodes. When this occurs, the electrode becomes positively charged. At the same time, the electrons build up on the other electrode, which becomes negatively charged. The oppositely charged electrodes create an electrical potential. If the electrodes are connected as part of a complete flow path, the electrical potential will cause a flow of electrons or current. A complete flow path is commonly referred to as a circuit. Another source of electrical potential is heat. One device that uses this source is a thermocouple. A thermocouple basically consists of two dissimilar metals that are joined together. When heat is applied to a thermocouple, the electrons in the metals move in such a way that an electrical potential develops. If the thermocouple is connected as part of a complete flow path, current flow will result, as indicated on this meter. As more heat is applied, the electrical potential and the resulting current flow increase. Since the amount of heat applied to a thermocouple is related to electrical potential, and therefore to current, thermocouples are most often used as temperature sensors in process systems. A third source of electrical potential is light. Light may be a great source of electricity in the future. The principle of producing electricity by using light is referred to as the photoelectric effect. 
Certain materials will generate electricity when they're exposed to light. For example, a solar cell contains this type of material. In fact, this solar cell can produce enough electricity to run a small motor. When the light intensity is increased, more electricity is generated, causing the motor to turn faster. Now, although chemical action, heat, and light are all sources of electrical potential, they're not sufficient or economical enough to supply continuous power for running electrical equipment. However, in certain applications, they can serve as important emergency power supplies. When magnetic effects are used to create an electrical potential, three elements are necessary. They are a magnetic field, a conductor, and relative motion between the magnetic field and the conductor. Let's begin with the magnetic field. Magnets have two poles, which are generally identified as north and south. When two magnets are placed close together, opposite poles will attract each other and like poles will repel each other. The magnetic forces that cause these actions are invisible. They result from magnetic fields around the magnets. We can get an idea of what these magnetic fields look like with a simple demonstration. First, we'll place the magnets close together with the opposite poles next to each other. Next, we'll place a piece of paper over the magnets and sprinkle some iron filings on the paper. Notice that the filings are forming patterns or lines. The lines that are formed by the filings indicate magnetic force lines. The lines are usually referred to as magnetic flux lines. Now, as we said, a magnetic field is one of the three elements necessary to create an electrical potential. Another element is a conductor. A good conductor is a substance that provides a path through which current can flow easily. Copper and aluminum are examples of good conductors. Natural rubber and synthetic rubber are examples of poor conductors. A poor conductor, or insulator, is a substance that allows little or no current flow. Insulators are often used around conductors to prevent current from taking undesirable paths. The third element necessary to create an electrical potential is relative motion between the conductor and the magnetic field. Let's see what this means. This conductor is a coil of copper wire. It's connected to an electrical sensing device. The pointer on this device will indicate an electrical potential. If we move a magnet through the coil, we'll be able to see the effects on the scale. Notice that as the magnet moves through the coil, the indicator swings alternately between positive and negative. If the motion stops, the indicator moves back to zero. The same thing will happen if the magnet is held stationary and the coil is moved around it. That's what relative motion means. Either the conductor or the magnetic field has to move. The electrical potential that's created in this situation is usually referred to as an induced electrical potential. The conductor, the magnetic field, and the relative motion induce an electrical potential in the conductor. This is the basic principle behind the generation of electricity that's used to operate equipment in industrial facilities.